We've got a Cobra 29 Limited Classic here to do. Brand new radio, don't know what's in it, whether it's a modified design or not. Let's open it up and see if it's like all the other ones I've worked on, or whether it's a new version. Which I've had a few of recently, different radios, which have got uh, different circuitry inside them. Require me to do some, potentially, world-leading modifications. Because I don't know if actually other people have done them or not. I mean, there's radios which, have, which are out there, which I think maybe I'm the first to do. Like, no, I've definitely done one of the Cobras. The, um, the other 29 is a new version of the 29, which I did before, and that was world first on that one. And I'm no reference to anywhere of anyone modifying my load successfully. I think I was the first to do that. And I've just done a Uniden PC78 LTX, which I may or may not be the first one to do that as well. Anyway, let's see what's in here. Hopefully it's the old version, which doesn't require anything special. Yay! It's the old version, which doesn't require anything special. Brilliant. That's exactly what I want to see. Easy modification. Right, the first thing I'll do is to make sure it actually works first. Because you never quite know what's happened to these things. I mean, mate, it's a brand new radio, but you never quite know. Maybe it's a return radio. Alright, let's turn this on. And turn this on. Alright, well, we've got channels. That's all looking normal. I've already preset the controls. Still transmit on it. Yep, it's transmitting fine. Okay, that's great. I'm going to be over current limiting my uh, house supply here because I've not got it set up right. Let's just fix that. I've got one amp out, so that's fine. Let me quit my scope and just check the frequency output and make sure it looks about right. Just for reference sake. Yep, 26965, that's all looking fine. So it appears to be working alright. Now I can actually install my modification board, which is this little thing here. It's my little board which I put in for CP conversions to New Zealand channels. I designed these and got these custom oscillators made. So this is what I'm going to be putting in. I've done videos previously on this, so I've done this a few times now. So it may be a little bit repetitive if you've already seen the other videos, but I'll be putting in this one. So I've mounted my board in here. I've got a standoff mounted on the hole. It's already in the circuit board there. I've removed the capacitor from one end, which goes from that side. I'll show you where it comes from. So it comes from that inductor there. It comes along. There's a solder pad just there, so the capacitor goes between those two. Lifted that one out, brought it up, put an extension onto it, a little lead, comes up, around the back, goes to the board on the output of the board. That's what I'm up to. Let's do some more. I've got a solder in now. It's not quite soldered yet. Okay, so that's that output connected up. Now we're going to do the ground to the case. So what I do here is I just literally just run a little wire from there to one of his grounding points, one of his metal cans. So I'll give it a scrape up, otherwise it doesn't work. This is what I always do, is give it a bit of a scrape. Gives you a clean surface to get onto then. A bit of fresh metal makes a big difference to how you actually solder it. If you can even solder it. So you give it a scrape like that. Gets a nice fresh metal there. Then you can actually solder onto the thing. Like that. Let's get a wire. I'll just use the old component leads like this one here. Now basically just get it in about the right shape, bend it around, stick it in there like that. Now it's way too long so I'll cut a piece off. And I'll solder this one in. So let's put some solder on here. And then I shall put it in the right place. There we go. Now let's take it onto the can. Try and do so you can see what I'm doing. Hub is going to make sure you get enough heat into the can so actually the solder will stick and adhere to it properly. So it's being like roughly on it. And then come back and do that one again as well, just to freshen that one up. That's it, that's grounded. All I've got to do now is put the VCC wire on. Again, the hardest bit about doing this is actually having it so you can see what I'm doing. I mean, I've done loads of these things, so I'm pretty quick at doing it. 
See what? I'm going to bring it down over here, straight onto the output of the Zener diode, which you can kind of see just there, it's right there. So, Zener diode there, we've got two resistors there, this resistor goes off to run to the POL, so that junction is where I want to hook up to. So this is a 5 volt supply. Of course I could just run a regulator, which I've done on other radios, but right now I'm just going to tap this on and this will work just fine. I've done that in the past, but regulators and circuits to uh, power the thing. But this has got a decent source, which I know I can use, so this is what I'm going to use. It's soldered on, so that should work. Plug the mic in. It may or may not transmit on the right frequencies because of the VCO adjustment. I need to do that in the other room. I can't do that here right now. Get the scope ready to go. We'll probe the RF section to see what we're getting from that. Power it up, transmit, we are transmitting and we are getting too weak a frequency to see it. I'm going to have to go straight into the upper. Yep, frequency is right, that's working. Cool. Excellent. Now I need to go and take the other room and realign everything. That takes a while. So I've gone through, done the alignment on it, it's all working fine, it's working quite well. Basic alignment's relatively straightforward on these. A lot of it don't actually have to touch because it's brand new radio, so it should be good from factory. Shouldn't really need to tweak a lot of this stuff like around here. Receiver ones need tweaking, transmit ones need tweaking, VCO needs tweaking, 10.24 needs tweaking. Interesting, this radio is a remanufactured one I think, because it's got an over-labeled serial number here. And I can just see under here it says June 2019, well June 19. So this radio is actually five years old even though it's new. Interestingly, and it's been over labelled. So it's almost like it's been remanufactured. It looks brand new, so I don't think it's actually got any issues with that. I think it is actually a new radio, but uh, it's just fine interesting. So yeah, obviously I've done the AMC adjustment and things like that and, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's working fine, so I can put this thing back together. Now I'm going to just twist these wires together. I think it actually helps a little bit of RF. Also helps to keep it a bit tidy, I suppose, but I just like to twist the wires together for the speakers. Just, just think it's better. So that is on. The tab there is already bent from factory, it's nice. it back together. Now, I've actually been asked in the past about these modules that I have in these radios about whether I can like sell them to people and stuff like that and the answer is no because it's for New Zealand channels. I cut have those modules custom made, well the oscillators are custom made. I ordered those especially to do this conversion on these particular radios. So yeah they only work on these radios and do I sell them and the answer is no. And there's other things that need to be done, it's not just that, you know, sure you can drop the modules in there and while that in, that's relatively straightforward. But it's all the alignment stuff you need to do as well and get all that right. It's a bit more involved than just dropping a module in and off you go. Someone that's used to doing CB radio work, you know, it's not a problem. You know, they can just jump in there and do the alignment and, you know, it's not different to normal really. But they're not really meant for overseas people, so if you're overseas and you want one of these modules, sorry, you can't get one. <laughs> there are alternatives though for people overseas, you know, there's, there's other bands you can get. You know, maybe you want to do high band or low band or something like that. Um, and you can get modules for those, I think. You used to be able to do it, I don't know if you still can or not. It's not exactly a complicated conversion, it's just having the right equipment to do the job. It's done. I have to give it a bit of a clean, get the grease marks off it. So, if one working radio, I can give that back. Still got to fix this microphone yet, we'll get to that. Oh, sorry, not this one. This microphone. I'm a, I don't know if I'll do a video about it, it's looking a bit worse for wear. Nothing that works. So go over there if you're not already subscribed. Other videos to watch down there if you're interested in those. And a Patreon support link over there if you want to support the channel. YouTube is expensive. I don't make much money at all from this channel. In fact, realistically I don't make any money at all from this channel because all of the money I do make goes back into the channel. So it actually costs you money to run. So, you know, if it helps, a couple of dollars a month if you're interested. You can always just do a one-off thanks down the bottom there if you found that interesting. Do that too. Get to